Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. Another fantastic week of college football highlighted by some upsets, including the Georgia Bulldogs, which if you watch the show wasn't really an upset, but it was an upset on paper. And it, I, Alex, I came away with this thinking one thing about Texas. Is there a program? in the country that gets more of the benefit of the doubt in terms of, and it's not just, you know, people being like, oh, Texas is back, right? It's the experts. It's Nick Saban. It's, uh, you know, the sharps in the gambling world uh, all all over over Texas. Texas, uh, Then the Texas Longhorns, like every other country. And I've always been, I've always been like this for whether it's teams, coaches, because there's not a lot of teams and coaches that get over the hump. I mean, think about, we always say how many guys have been in the national championship uh, conversation, won a national championship. There's only two uh, current coaches in Dabo Sweeney and Kirby Smart. So you have to like go out there and like prove it to me before I can say, hey, that's a real national championship contender on the level of Georgia. Texas didn't do anything this year that proved it, you know, and then last year they had a good season, but they were upset by Washington get got killed by Michigan. It was a good year. Don't get me wrong, but they weren't on the level of Georgia. They weren't on the level of yeah. Michigan. It's a big 12 like route. Also. Yeah. Like- you know, uh, anyone get the benefit of the doubt more than Texas? Like why were people so high on Texas coming into the game when the only proof that we had was Michigan and Oklahoma, who once again, absolutely boot the bat. Oklahoma gets killed by USC, absolutely yeah. slaughtered. And Michigan gets slaughtered by Illinois. So we always had a hunch those teams sucked. And it wasn't like Texas beat them 50 to zero. I just, does anyone get the benefit of the doubt, like the Texas Longhorns from the from the public? I won't stand for the Mac Brown slander. Three coaches That's with true. national He's hanging Jeffrey. on by a threat. Texas a is still living on those Mac Brown days, yeah. um, quite frankly. And yeah, well, I think anybody who had a brain I mean, I don't know. How, I, I think that you can look at Texas in a vacuum coming into this Georgia game and, and, and say, yeah, that's a damn good team. They've done nothing but beat the hell out of opponents. And, and you can, you're only as good as your schedule indicates. You know, it's not Texas's fault that the SEC gave them this soft schedule. It's not their fault. Maybe they had a hand into it. They are, you know, right next to God in terms of college football. Um, but, yeah, I think that if you had a brain, you watched that Michigan game, and you said, hmm, Michigan might not be that good. Good. And then we continue to watch Michigan unfold without Jim Harbaugh, which I've been on before the season even started that Michigan was going to be a horrible football team. They lost their roster. They lost their quarterback. They lost their offensive coordinator, their head coach, their defensive coordinator. Everybody from that national championship team is gone. And they're right where they should be outside of the top 25. And then that Oklahoma game. And we go, hmm, maybe Oklahoma isn't as good as we thought. And they're not. And we, you know, you get in trouble sometimes doing the, pro- the 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 transit of property game, but sometimes it's useful. And anybody with the brain knew going into this Georgia Texas game that Texas hadn't proven it. It's not to say they couldn't prove yeah. it against this Georgia team because Georgia hadn't looked great coming up into these these games. They lost to Bama. They didn't look strong after those the the the, the games that followed. But to say that Texas was just going to go in and and roll Georgia because of what they had done against nobodies. Oklahoma's a new team in the SEC. The only real SEC team they played was what? Mississippi Mississippi State, which is the worst team in the SEC. Yeah. I mean, hang on. They're showing some life. We're going to talk about them later in the week. I I mean, Mississippi State might be a cover uh, cover machine going down the stretch. I do believe that their offense is clicking. But also, like – Nothing you've seen in 2024 should have told you that Texas was going to roll this weekend. And my and you, yeah, you're right. They got the benefit of the doubt because maybe a lot of people want Texas to be yeah. good. Well, I think I think that's definitely what it is. But that's when it shocks me when it's a Nick Saban, when it's a, a gambling sharp that makes a living gambling. Uh, these guys all all loading up on Texas, and I'm like, have we not seen this song and dance before with the Georgia Bulldogs? Like, yeah. you give them an edge, count and, them out against your own. And, and, you and it's just like, I, but what are we doing? It's like I'm gonna take the thing that I've seen. Time and Proving time and time on. again, yeah. work every single time. And I know Georgia came into this game a little limped on the injury department, not looking as good as they possibly have. And yeah. I know they're playing on the road. And listen, I knew it was going to be a tough test. It turned out to be not as tough as we thought it was going to be. Well, but at the end of the day, like I've watched them do this a yeah. hundred times. I have never seen Steve Sarkeesian walk into a big game and win it. Never. I have never seen Quinn Ewers walk into a big game and win it. I have never seen any of these, these guys on Texas. I've never seen this defense play against a good offense. All these things that we had never 
ever seen coming into this game that we said, hey, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. That could be a problem. Well, it turns out all of it was a problem. Texas defense, not that good. Uh, Quinn yeah. Ewers, absolute dog crap. Yeah. Just like like Steve Sarkeesian, not prepared for the moment. Mm -mm. The Texas fan base, a bunch of jack wagons throwing water bottles on the field. And yes, it got the call overturned. So credit to them. Yeah, so, it worked. A, a, a bunch of jack. I mean, Listen, Texas should be embarrassed today. They should. They, yeah. they every every no their fans should be embarrassed for mm -hmm. thinking that they were just going to walk into there. And everyone that thought Texas should be embarrassed. And I'm I quite literally, you know, we're on this show. I know a lot of you guys watching are Georgia fans. I haven't rooted for Georgia in a long time. Uh, I was I walked into Saturday and I said I was I was hooping. I was barking. I was barking. I was barking, I was barking because. I, it just pissed me off that Texas, after beating Oklahoma, yeah. who was not in the SEC, they're not a real SEC team, uh, and uh, and injured, they just proved this past week and that they Mississippi are Mississippi State. They were like owned the SEC. <laughs> yeah. now. Like, what in the hell were you guys thinking? Well, newsflash: you guys aren't that good. Yeah, Georgia is your you daddy, you, and that's not a and that's not a game. What, by the way, that they're going to come back later in the year and win. I'm just letting you know. Like, they're, they're not coming back. At, beat a good team twice, that whole thing. They're not coming back and beating Georgia. I can tell you that. That was a mismatch from start to finish. The offensive line that was so good against Michigan, Oklahoma, totally, totally out-athleted, out man. That was physically dominant in the trenches, and they're not going to get that game at home again. Well, to build some of that, you know, also the SEC schedule for Texas is – you know, you're going to say, oh, we played Georgia. You didn't really get it all that bad. Ask your friends, Oklahoma, how bad it could really be in the SEC. And Texas is going to benefit it. They're going to go to Athens next season. And the SEC schedule is the exact same. It's just flip-flopped home and away. They still got AM, which is not going to be an easy game. But I think, you know, in terms of the actual game, what you were just, you know, touching on a little bit, I was shocked that Texas's offensive line looked as bad as it did. And it's not. it was not only in the run game. It was in pass sets. It was everything. It was out-schemed. It was out-hustled. It was out-talented. you know, talented. And that was the one thing I thought, you know, going into the game, I was like, if Texas does win, that offensive line is going to be dominant. That's how we've seen teams beat Georgia in the past. The Bama teams dominated Georgia in the at the line of scrimmage. Georgia came in. And put on a vintage Kirby Smart performance. Shout out Glenn Schumann. Shout out that Georgia defense stepping up when it mattered most. And I think, you know, if you're looking at this Texas offense, you know, I was, I was, I've been down on Quinn Ewers all season long. I thought my, you know, incredibly hot take that he wasn't going to finish the season as a starter came to fruition at halftime, but they went back to him. Steve Sarkeesian, that's an absolutely boneheaded move. You either go to Arch Manning and you stick with him or you don't do it because that box of, you know, that's open now. And, and no offense, but Quinn Ewers has a lot of questions to answer. The guy, you know, in my opinion, he's not cut out for it. He's not going to lead you to a national championship when the I think that question's unknown for Arch Manning. But actual gameplay, Georgia and Carson Beck, you know, didn't play great. You know, down the stretch, Carson Beck came up with some big plays, you know, put the game out of reach. Uh, but for the most part, Georgia's receivers were selling. Carson Beck was selling. The entire offense was selling. And Texas still couldn't do – like, it wasn't even close. And Georgia didn't even play close no. to their perfect game. No. I mean, that game could have been 47-10. to 10. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 like, Carson Beck was selling. Carson Beck had three turnovers. Yeah. I mean, that game could have been 21-0 to zero at the end of the yeah. first quarter. And, and, you know, it took the reversed pass interference call. That, but yeah, listen, it probably wasn't a pass interference. So, yeah, maybe they ended up getting the call. The rest right. were terrible but, on both sides. I don't want to hear it from either side. But, but at the end of the day, like, this game was not – not a close game. No. There was nothing about, and this game was in your building. You yeah. knew what was like. You're not coming back and beating this team later in the year. And I think Texas has a lot more questions about the rest of their schedule. And yes, it is easy. But listen, you got Vandy next week. That, that's going to be a much tougher game than I think people realize. You got Texas A&M looming on your schedule later in the year, and I believe they have Florida. And listen, Florida's playing a lot better football. They just beat the hell out of Kentucky. Wouldn't be surprised if Florida gave Texas a game because I think Texas. I don't know if I like Georgia, I, I think is the best team in the country. I will say that. I don't think Texas is close to a top five team. I mean, that's what I watched. On, that's what I watched on Saturday. I mean, you guys did they completely laid an egg at home in yeah. their own building against a team in Georgia that we were talking about was like we didn't really know who they were. And I don't think this is Georgia is a world beater like they have been in the past. This was the most vulnerable team, your Georgia team, you're probably going to get as a member of the SEC. And you go out there and get railroaded. It wasn't even close. 
close. They embarrassed you. They embarrassed, they enforced your will. The look on Arch Manning and Quinn Ewer's yeah. face at halftime that was, was awesome. everything. That was the entire state of Texas. That was everybody that was sitting here telling me I was an idiot because I was picking Georgia. That, that was everybody like, wow. We were not ready for this, and you weren't ready for this, and you're not ready for this this year, and that's not a one-year fix. That's something that's going to have to be ingrained in your blood. So welcome to the SEC. Yeah, Dom, I mean, doubt Kirby Smart, a hungry Kirby Smart team at your own peril. It, it feels like Texas has just been living in this fairy world of the Big 12 where it was like, you know, just because Georgia hasn't been good or LSU or Bama or Ole Miss or Tennessee or South Carolina or Florida, you go down the list of the SEC. It doesn't matter what's going on in that conference at that time. You have to show up every single week or you will lose. And it just so and it just goes to show they were handed they got the best version uh, or the best team in the SEC. But, like, this isn't something that only happens at the top of the SEC. Ask Alabama, ask LSU, ask Georgia. You can lose any given week in the SEC. And you know what? I can't wait for them, not next season, 2026, when they actually have a difficult SEC schedule, not just, just this Looney Tunes SEC schedule this year.